Hello everyone, welcome back to Creed 2.6's series on Islam 101. Right now we're going to take a look at the Qur'an. Now the Qur'an is the holy scripture for Muslims. As we said in a previous video, there were many holy scriptures sent down by God, but Allah has considered this one to be the final revelation, the one that all Muslims must adhere to, the superior revelation from God. Just reading the words of the Qur'an in Arabic, even if you don't understand them, is considered to be a blessing to you and to the area where you're sitting. I was taught, for example, when I was a Muslim, how to read the Arabic Qur'an well before I even knew how to read English. In fact, I had recited the entire Qur'an by the age of five in Arabic, not even knowing uh, how to speak Arabic. I was just taught how to read the scripture. And that's how important the Qur'an is for Muslims. They're taught to read at a very early age. When we investigate the early history of Islam, we can see exactly why the Qur'an is so important to Muslims. In fact, Islam as a religion began when Muhammad received the revelation of the first words, Ikra bi ismi rabbi kallazi khalaq. Now when these words were supposedly revealed to Muhammad, Islam began. These words aren't found in the beginning of the Qur'an. The Qur'an doesn't go in chronological order. Uh, the Qur'an doesn't really have an explicit order, but more or less the longer surahs are found in the beginning of the Qur'an and the shorter ones are found in the end. There are 114 chapters, and I, I suggest you take a look at the Qur'an to become familiar with some of the teachings that are so important to all Muslims around the world. Now, Muslims are very devout in their reading of the Qur'an. Not only do they read it at, in their spare time, in the form of the book itself, but during the five daily prayers, Muslims are told to recite portions of the Qur'an. Now, these portions can be as long as one-thirtieth of the Qur'an, or they can be short, as short as ten words. Suffice it to say, Muslims who are expected to pray the Salat, and that's all Muslims, memorize portions of the Qur'an very early in their lives. Aside from the daily application of the Qur'an in Muslims' lives, the Qur'an also has a primary role to play in Sharia. Sharia is Islamic law. Don't worry, we'll have a whole video on Sharia later. What I want to say for now, though, is that the most important component of Sharia is the Qur'an. Muslims agree with this unanimously. And so, we understand it has an important role to play, not just in daily lives, but also in the law of Islam. One last thing that's very important to recognize about the Qur'an is that it is the vindication for Islam. Well, what do I mean? If we take a look at Christian theology, we find that the resurrection is the center, the foundation of Christian belief. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, our faith is in vain, says Paul. And so, in a similar way, the Qur'an is the vindication of Islam. If the Qur'an is not written by Allah, Islam is false. If it is written by Allah, then Islam is true. And in order to defend the fact that the Qur'an is written by Allah, the Qur'an itself gives some proofs. The primary one is that the Qur'an is unassailable in its literary excellence. No one is able to sit down and write words as beautiful and as deep and profound, as literarily excellent as the Qur'an. The Qur'an itself challenges non-Muslims to try and write something like it. A book, or ten chapters, or even one chapter. Like the Qur'an, when the non-believer sits down and tries to write it, it doesn't matter how much help he has, he'll never be able to. That is the challenge that the Qur'an provides to show that it itself is from God. Nowadays, Muslims will provide many other reasons to believe that the Qur'an is from Allah. For example, they will point to chapter 15, verse 9 of the Qur'an, which says that God will guard this book. They say, therefore, that the Qur'an is perfectly preserved, that no one has been able to change a single word of it as it was revealed to Muhammad. It's exactly in the same form. Some Muslims will argue that there are mathematical marvels found in the Qur'an, certain repeating patterns of numbers which could not have been created by any human. Some will argue for scientific accuracy. Now, these are arguments that in the Qur'an they find scientific truths that cannot have been written down by a man in the 7th century. Therefore, Allah must have sent these words to the Prophet Muhammad. One final argument is that there are prophecies in the Qur'an which came true. Therefore, it must be from Allah. Now, we don't have time to examine these arguments here. That's not the purpose of this video. The purpose of this video is to show just how important the Qur'an is to Muslims, what they do with it, how they use it in their daily life, what it was historically, and how it is the center of Islamic theology insofar as vindicating the religion as the true religion of Allah. I hope this video has helped you understand these facts and that you will continue to follow Creed 2.6 Ministries in its investigation on the origins of Christianity and Islam. 
Thank you so much for visiting. God bless you all.